Schnock, Bakersfield, Merced, Modesto, San Francisco, Oakland, Sacramento, Reading, and all points north. I, north I was just sending a wire. Number three on track four. There's Paterno and Brewster. Looks like he said for all of us, Bob. I don't like it. Well, take it from me, the fellow's poison. Why don't you stay here? And admit that I'm afraid of him. Listen, my friend. I'm not going because he sent for me. I'm going because of something I wish to do. Paterno and Brewster are against him, too. Well, let me go with you. Not this time. What's your step, Chief? Don't worry about me. I'll take care of myself, all right. you're afraid of him. Well, I'm not, nor do I consider him useful to me. We understand each other. We're organized. What good is he to us? Maybe he will have something to say about that when he comes. Suppose he does. He's not here. And what if he were? Are we sheep that we follow him blindly? Man isn't human. Nah. I don't think he's on the train. what I have to say, then listen. I'm through with you. The rest might be yellow and lick your boots, but not me, not me. I'm not afraid of you, nor of anything you can do.
Dick Tracy speaking. Oh, yeah. Well, I think you better take that up with Anderson's office. Yes, he has my report on it. All right, goodbye. Hello? Speaking. Oh, yes. Well, I know all about that. Send Steve Lockwood in, will you? And now, Gordon, what's on your mind? Well, I'm thinking you're about the busiest man I ever saw. <laughs> well, Hello, Gwen. Hello, Steve. Uh, Stern reports another spider mark case. Strange how every single person branded with the spider mark and then murdered turns out to be some well-known criminal. Torno, Benson, Corvich. Were all those men victims of the spider's mark? Seven of them here. And now Stern reports another. It ceased to be a job for the local authorities. The murders have taken place all over the United States. Before I can expect to receive any notice from my G-man brother, I guess I'll have to become an arch criminal. What was it you had on your mind, Gordon? I think it was something to do with the fact that uh, it's your birthday. <laughs> well, I... We had sort of planned to celebrate. That is, if the nation can spare you for half a day. What are you talking about? Why the circus? Circus? It's yeah. more than just a circus. Ellery Brewster has hired performers to give a show for the little orphans at his country estate. And we promised him that we'd drag you along with us. Uh, I, I can make it, Gwen. Oh, Dick. Hey, can I go, Chief? I guess so, Mike. Oh. I think it's wonderful of Mr. Brewster to do all this for the orphans. No, it's swell of it. Hey, come on, let's sit down, Joey. Well, 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 look who's here. Hello. Oh, hiya, Steve. Hiya, and Miss Gwen, I'm Hello. glad to see you. Hello, Hello there, Gordon. Brewster. Well, uh, where's that brother of yours? Oh, working hard as usual. He can't take time off. Yet. Here, let me have that ball. You kids don't know how to hold that ball. Did you play football, sir? Did I play football? Say, I was a shortstop on All-American team. I was. Shortstop? You mean quarterback, don't you? Oh, well, it's all the same thing. You know what I did? I made three touchdowns in the first inning, and I made a home run in the last quarter. And how did I do it? Just like this, with a drop kick. <laughs> Music. Curtain. Coco, come out. Coco, come out and make your bow. <laughs> and now, kind people. I must leave you with Coco, because without me, the puppets, they have no voice and cannot talk. Isn't that right, Coco? Hey, you big lug, take your hat off. The kids can't see. How about taking your own off? I told a lie today, and Jack Onet got spanked for it. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> yes? A long-distance call is waiting for you in your study, Mr. Brewster. A long-distance call? Yes, sir. All right, I'll take it. Uh, will you excuse me for just a moment, please? You bet. Why was your little sister Jacquinette spanked, Coco? Because I told a lie! Again. Honest, I won't. You've learned your lesson, Coco. Go home and be a good boy. But if you ever tell lies again, I will haunt you. Help! Help! Mr. Bush has been murdered! Say, uh, McGurk, bring everybody in from outside, will you? Federal 4,000. Hello? Hello, Dick. 
Ellery Brewster has just been murdered. Murdered? I'll leave right away. There's a footprint. This is the direction from which the shot must have come. Make an examination of that. of sawdust are not the same. They come from different types of wood. I noticed that uh, sawdust does not cling to your clothes as it does to the others. We are puppeteers, sir. We do not perform in a sawdust ring. We can all vouch for the puppeteers, Mr. Gracie. They were giving their performance at the time of the murder. I see. This? Sawdust, no doubt. Some of my puppets are stuffed with it. Oh, I wasn't aware of that. Watch yourselves. Take these two crooks back into the house. Let me take care of these fellas, Chief. Here's something they left behind them. Let me see it. That was a pretty good tackle you made there, son. Oh, gee, that was nothing. But say, you sure can use a gun. You're Dick Tracy, aren't you? Yes. I'm just an orphan. But someday I'm going to be a G-man, too. Well, now's a good time to start. Come along. Me, I saw three men out here. You did. One of them got away. I'd know him if I ever saw him again, though. You sure about that? Certainly. Well, take this into the house and wait there for me. Yes, Mr. Tracy. The sawdust you found on that puppeteer is the same as we discovered in this room. Mr. Martino, can you account for the sawdust I found in the cup of your trousers? Certainly. No doubt it fell there when I was fixing one of my little puppets. Some of them I stuff with sawdust to make them fat. Let me have one of those records, Steve. Right, Dick. Please, please, Mr. Ghost, don't hurt me. Why was your little sister Jacquinette spanked, Coco? Honest, honest, Mr. Ghost, I'll never tell lies again. Honest, I won't. Put up your hands, everybody. I took the precaution to remove the bullets before bringing that cleverly disguised revolver in here. You came here while your assistant worked the puppets, and this record played your voice. You shot Ellery Brewster and then returned to the booth in time to take your bow. Take him away, boys. You 
didn't think I'd get you, did you? I knew it was you all the time. See if they're locked up. I'll be out the station shortly. You certainly cleaned up this murder in a hurry. Uh, these men were only tools. They didn't plan the murder. Have you seen anything of Junior? Oh, there you are. Why didn't you get in the bus with the others? Everyone was terribly worried. You bad boy. Well, I'm sorry, ma'am. I'd like to keep this little rascal with me for a while, miss. You see, he can identify one of the men that got away. And his life won't be safe until this matter is cleared up. Well, I guess that'll be satisfactory, Mr. Tracy. But you'll have to make the necessary arrangements. He really is one of our very best boys. <laughs> say, Gordon, you were Brewster's attorney. Did he at any time say or do anything to arouse your suspicions? Well, about a month ago, he did give me a sealed envelope, which he asked me to keep for him. An envelope? Yes. He wouldn't tell me what was in it. As I remember now, he acted rather peculiar about it. He said he wanted me to have it in case anything happened to him. Could you get that for me right away? Yes, it's in my office. I'll go down there and then meet you at the lab. Good. Inside, quick. Hmm, his condition seems critical. What if he should die? Then we will eliminate a very dangerous enemy. He won't die. But by means of this operation, a simple altering of certain glands, he will be unable to distinguish between right and wrong. In that event, he will be very useful to us, Moloch. Very useful. My brother Gordon, Brewster's attorney, goes to get a certain sealed envelope bearing on the case. His car is discovered wrecked and Gordon can't be found. Last night, his office was broken into and all records taken. Whoever is responsible for those spider marks is the man we want. And I'm asking for full assignment to the case. Go to it, Dick. You can have a free hand. Thanks. like the work of some crank. Unless you can give me a more definite reason why the bridge should not open, Mr. Tracy, the plans will go through as scheduled. I have two weeks in which to work. Perhaps I may get a lead from these notes in that time. Meanwhile, if you receive any more, will you please let me know? Certainly. Gladly. Thank you. I have just removed the bandages. The transformation is complete. Will his face be recognized? No. There is a slight scar, and the facial nerves have contracted. There is also a white streak on his hair. Is the operation completely successful? 
Can he be dominated? He is entirely incapable of recognizing evil from good. Wait. Come in, Gordon. is your enemy and a fool. He is a fool. It is well that you feel that way. You will be privileged to share in the power which is mine. It is time we startle these fools out of their smug complacency. This little machine is only a model of the big one which we have, the one we shall use to destroy the Bay Bridge. Watch that phase. Each threatening note was sent to the governor from a different post office. Each one was written on a different typewriter. There is one note, however, which gives us a real clue. This letter was typed on a 5A Underton. That model was discontinued three years ago. Each letter is imperfect. The clue is the G. The letter G is new. It was replaced from a different type model. That means it was repaired in some shop. Right. I want you men to find out where that 5A Underton was repaired, who paid the bill, and the address of that person. Time is short. This clue must lead us to the man back of the spider murders, the man who is threatening to destroy the Bay Bridge. Get going. Repaired? No, better than that. Here's the address of where it was returned. 238 Burton Place. Chief, we've located the address. 238 Burton Place. Take him into the next room and drag any information out of them you can. All right, get, All right, get, get on. Right, right, go on. Come on, tramp. Hurry up! They're due to make an attempt on the bridge in less than an hour. We've got to work fast. When the bridge is being patrolled. No one will be anywhere near it. You know, I never saw a chart like that before. 20,000 cycles, crystallization point. 36,000 cycles, steel brakes. Steve, name everything that's calibrated in cycles. Well, years of cycles. Electricity, sound. Sound. That's it. Sound vibration. Russo's voice could break a wine glass. It's not impossible. These beans may have just such a machine, a machine that will disintegrate matter by sound. Yes, but it... There may still be time to save the bridge. Send out a police conscription for every available truck to be driven onto the Bay Bridge. The more heavily loaded, the better. Well, but Dick, I... Caruso's voice could not have broken the glass had it been filled with wine. We may be able to load the bridge with tons of extra weight and thereby destroy all their calculations. Mobilize every truck in the city. Right. Hello, give me the old operator. Calling all cars. Mobilize every truck. Send them to the Bay Bridge.
and wonderfully spun cables is more than just a bridge. It symbolizes a highway to a greater civilization.
Use your power. Take him away, fellas. Hello. Hello, operator. Dick Tracy speaking. Get me the police air drone. Hurry it up. trying to follow us. Rise above its ceiling. disappeared into the stratosphere. But naturally, they were unable to follow. It'll probably hover up there and descend at night. See, I've been questioning Bert. You know the fellow who had his truck jammed on the bridge? Couldn't get a thing out of him. You know, I have a hunch he's tied up with the spider ray. The sound disintegrator that nearly wrecked the bridge is a menace to the entire nation. It is vital that we destroy it within the shortest possible time. Gwen, you and Steve better go to the lab and see what you can find in those vacuum cleanings. Right. Hey, lady, you can't come in here. Young man, I report you to your superior. Yeah, but Mr. Tracy doesn't want to be bothered. Well, to... you take your hands off of me. I, I, I never saw such an impertinent young man in all my life. Dear. Which of you be Mr. Tracy? I am Mr. Tracy. What can I do for you? Well, who are the other two? Well, these are my superiors, Miss... Uh... Hankins. Hankins, a name. Well, Miss Hankins, won't you be seated? Well, I don't mind if I do. It's about my white-legged chickens, Mr. Tracy. Mr. Tracy's very busy. I'm sure there are other departments to take care of your trouble. No one else would listen to me. So I came to you. I knew you'd listen to me. Well, I'll be glad to. <laughs> my white 
egg and chicken were mighty fine layers once. Ever since that peculiar humming sound come from that old power plant on the other side of the hill, they won't lay worth a ding-dang. Not a ding-dang, Mr. Tracy. Where do you live, Mrs. Higgins? To the side of the hill from the power plant, I told you. Of course. Now, let's see. That power plant belongs to... Uh... That is the old Sierra Pacific plant. They don't use it no more. And I want that humming sound investigated. Well, I don't blame you. Thank you very much, Miss Hankins. I'll see what can be done. Mike? Yeah, Chief. Mike, will you escort Mrs. Hankins to the elevator? Come with me, Miss Hankins. Humming noise. Old power plant. It's a wonder we ever get anything done. And yet, Chief, we've obtained leads from stranger sources. I guess you're right, Dick. There can't be anything to that chatter. Perhaps not. Well, I'm working in my laboratory tonight. If I find anything, I'll let you know in the morning. All right, Dick. G-Man brother of mine messed things up at the bridge. Don't talk of failure, Gordon. We can and must gain the power we seek. I'll remain here with the wing until morning, then fly in with an ordinary plane. Tomorrow, then. Brother against brother. One good, one evil. I wonder which will win. We shall eliminate the G-Man. Have you any lead on the whereabouts of Gordon? I can't tell you a thing, except that I feel certain my brother is alive. Do you attribute his disappearance to the spider ring? The spider ring is guilty of a great many crimes. We've got to wipe it out. Well, Dick, I see you're pretty busy. Well, you know how it is. I'm sorry. I guess we'll be running along. Good luck, fella. Thanks. Good night. Good night. From the vacuum cleaning he's taken from Burke's clothes, we can pretty well tell where the man has been in the past week. Check over that list, Gwen. Brick dust, 12%. Mustard seed pollen, 20%. Coal dust, 8%. Asbestos fiber, 43%. Asbestos fiber? Where would a man be apt to get that much asbestos on his clothes? They might have worked in a factory. Asbestos. Now, let me see. Ding, dang! Let go of my ear! Junior! Well, he run off while I was reading to him. Young man, it's time for you to be in bed. Now, run along with Mike. Oh, okay. I'm going. Junior! What was that expression you just used? Ding, dang? Ding, dang. That's what that little old lady said in my office this afternoon. How long would it take to drive to the Sierra Pacific steam plant? Well, we could make it by morning. Why? It may be a wild goose chase, but the pipes and boilers of a steam plant are usually well covered with asbestos. I'll see if I can dig up a watchman. You wait here. All right, Dick. I won't take off until the coast is clear. What do you want? Department of Justice investigator. I'd like to inspect this plant. Sure. No reason why not. You can't see much, though. 
Plant's been closed down for a long time. See who it is. Nothing much here to investigate. No? Okay. Just a minute. What's in that building? The place is locked and I haven't the key. Well, I guess we can skip it this time. What's up? We're being watched by a dozen guys. That's the spider's den, all right. Start the car and let's go. That dip I'm bailing out. Keep driving. ready to take off at a moment's notice.
Come on, Steve, we're taking off. There they go. Got to drag away that plane. Not much we can do about it, is it? Well, anyway, I destroyed the sound disintegrator. That menace has been removed. 
wonder where they can be taking the wing. If we can make Burke talk, we'll find out. Rise into the stratosphere before you set your course for our number two base. I tell you, Burke, the law may show more leniency in your case if you give us the information we want. What can I say when I don't know anything? What about my brother Gordon Tracy, who disappeared two months ago? I'll bite. What about him? All right, boys, take him away. I'd give a fortune to be able to locate the headquarters of the spider ring. This is very bad, Gordon. Burke is yellow at heart, and if they sweat him, he might talk. Burke knows we have made arrangements to get him out, and will keep his mouth shut. Then we can go ahead with our plans. They are already underway. This time there will be no interference. Did you get anything out of Burke? No, not yet. Doesn't he know where your brother is? If he does, he isn't telling. But it doesn't seem possible for a man like Gordon to disappear without leaving some trace. Oh, well. It'll work out somehow. I'd like a new radio, Junior. Oh, gee, Mr. Tracy, it's swell. May I come in? Certainly, Commander Brandon. Come right in. Oh, hello, Junior. I guess we'll have to postpone this, Gwen. How do you do, Miss Andrews? How do you do? Won't you sit down, Commander? Thank you. Well, is this a business call or social? Business, Dick. The steamship Mauravania docks this afternoon, one full day ahead of schedule. Well, there's nothing so bad about that. No. But the captain radioed that he expects trouble on his arrival. What kind of trouble? Word. Valued at a million dollars. The captain believes they're aboard his ship and that there will be an attempt made to smuggle them into the country. I'm afraid I wouldn't be of much help to you, Commander. You see, that's out of my department. Besides, I'm concentrating on the spider ring right now. <laughs> I'd feel a whole lot better with you on the case. I hope I have better luck next time. Thanks, Commander. Thanks for asking me. Thank you. Goodbye, Miss Adams. Goodbye. Goodbye, sir. Sign off now, but stand by for any message regarding the Moravania. Do you suppose that was China, Mr. Tracy? Certainly sounded like it. What does your log chart say? Well, that's the funny thing about it. There isn't a single station listed in that wavelength. Well, that's too low a wavelength for an established station. Sounds like Russian or Hog Latin or something. Maybe it's one of them Fiji Island Zetas. Say, you know that might be Fiji. Down to Fiji Island. You know where they do that dance down there? Oh, Mr. Lockwood. Something turned up, Steve? Yes, this package was sent to the jail for Burke, so I brought it right over to you. Let's examine it in the laboratory. Can I go with you, Mr. Tracy? No, that may be an international spy sending a message in code. You stick by the radio, Junior. Gosh. Junior, you better let me help you do that now. Oh, no, you don't. Mr. Tracy told me to do it. Gwen, I'd like to examine this in the x-ray. And I'll start the machine. Have you got the whistle? Well, the x-ray doesn't show a thing in any of them, Dick. No, I guess not. Hello, here's one that's been opened and resealed. Where? The fourth one from the right. Let me have it, Gwen. Must be something wrong here or the package wouldn't have been tampered with.
any disappearing ink on these, or it would show up. Does that mean anything, Dick? It looks like a small pinhole. Maybe you're right, Gwen. We'll soon find out. tomorrow. Break jail. Brandon was right in suspecting the Burrs were on board the Moravania. The Spider's men will be too busy getting a hold of them to free Burt. If we could only make Burt talk. Maybe he won't have to talk. What's the idea of moving me to another jail? It's orders, Sonny boy. Get in. and beat it. We'll take care of these guys. Thanks. Gee, man. <laughs> Good work, fellas. It looked like the real McCoy. Do you think we fooled Burke with it? Well, he's gone, isn't he? The spider's expecting me. What makes you think so? Listen, you don't think the spider would pull a jailbreak if he didn't want to see me, do you? Oh, all right. I'll have somebody take you out to him. here in a lot. There's a man with him. He says it looks like Burke. Burke! That jailbreak was slick, Chief. Those G-men were as meek as lambs. We had nothing to do with it. You were not supposed to be released until tomorrow. You'd better be on the level. Why, well, I am. Something's wrong. Someone slipped up somewhere, Chief. Well, you ain't getting nothing on it. Just the same. He told me to. 
Ouch. Calling Mike McGurk. Calling Mike McGurk. Hello, Mr. Tracy. Calling Junior. Hello, Junior. Can you hear me? Now you know. Well, if it ain't Dick Tracy, we didn't expect to get you this evening. Now that you've got Dick Tracy, I suppose you intend to keep him prisoner on this tramp steamer in the river basin. Maybe we won't bother keeping you very long. The police know all about the abandoned boats in this river basin. They know all about the Moravania and the million dollar fur deal, too. And Mike McGurk is right now telling Steve Lockwood to have the police boat meet the Moravania before it docks. Why, you... What? Why didn't you let me? Not yet. Tie him up. All right. Steve's going to the docks. He is, huh? Say, we got to get on my motorcycle and get down to that dock before they leave. Come on. The Moravania is entering the harbor. The wind is just right for a smoke screen. Get the men to their places with gas masks. Have the smoke machine ready for immediate action. All right, men. Get to your post. Be right with you. Come along. He won't give us any more trouble, Chief. <laughs> Start the smoke. Shoot the gas through.
capo. We can't make it through there. We'll be killed.
Why you want to ride your motorcycle off the end of a dock beats me. Well, I was going... You what? We was going to... You don't say so. Looks like a lot of good equipment for such an old tub. Tramp steamer was one of the spider's hideouts, Steve. If we're lucky, we may find something which will tell us more about them. Hey, the men we captured have been searched. One of my men found this. Does it mean anything? Thanks, Brandon. It may. Doesn't tell me anything now. Steve, your pockets are dry. You better keep it. Arriving on Pacific Queen, hoping you will meet me, Aunt Mary. What's that? Hmm. Aunt Mary. This may be of some value. A million dollars lost, and many of our men captured by the police. All caused by stupidity, Moloch. And if Dick Tracy finds out that we're after the Mogra necklace, he'll try to block that too. Just received word that the wireless message concerning the Mogra necklace has been found by federal men. And that means Dick Tracy. I don't think even Dick Tracy can stop us this time. Monsieur Claire René arriving with famous Mogra necklace aboard Pacific Queen today. Necklace is of great value. Signed. Baguette Brothers, New York City. Is that what you wanted to know, Dick? It all ties up, Chief. The spider ring, unless I miss my guess, will make an attempt for the necklace. Steve and I will fly out to meet the Pacific Queen. Wire the commander to expect us. Tell him we will pose as newsreel photographers. Yes, in that way we can use the fluoroscopic equipment without exciting too much suspicion. Right, we're leaving right away. Mr. Tracy, Mike won't take his castor oil. He won't, huh? Get away, huh? Yeah, you... All right, doctor. Take care of your patient. <laughs> Come in. Oh, Mr. Odette. Glad to see you. And Mr. Potter. How do you do, sir? How do you do? We just dropped in for a moment, Dick. Congratulations. Oh, for what? We've heard about your cleanup at the waterfront. Oh, that. That's ancient history now. Oh, oh, oh. oh, Steve, you better put that stuff right in the car. All right, Chief. We'll have to hurry. No. Going away? Oh, just one of those things. Be back by night. And... Hey, Wait a minute, Steve. I'll help you. Hey, I thought you were sick. I never felt better in my life. Oh, <laughs> Dick, have you heard anything? Found any trace of your brother Gordon? I'm sorry, old man. Oh, well, it'll work out some way, I'm sure. I'll have to be running along. I'm awfully glad you gentlemen dropped in. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye. See you again. Goodbye, Dick. Is that Mary? Uh, you never can tell. <laughs> how these G-men get on the trail of crime. No answer. Need to pick up gears of readiness for the landing and stand by to render all assistance. Yes, sir. We're already forced to hook on.
Taylor show the gentleman to Monsieur Staple. Of course, sir. But of course you are mistaken. Only an hour ago, I put the necklace away in his secret hiding place. I hope our suspicions are groundless, Monsieur René. It's gone. I was afraid it would be. Monsieur, the Mogra necklace, it was the king's ransom. I can't understand. Monsieur René, we must work fast. I believe that necklace is still aboard the dirigible. Can you describe what it looks like? I can do better than that. I have a very fine imitation of it. An imitation? Every valuable jewel purchased by our company has a synthetic duplicate made of it. I'll show you. It is just a reputation, but a very good one. May I keep it for a while? Oui, monsieur. Commander, what's the position of the dirigible? We are just over Santa Barbara, heading north for San Francisco. Have the people assembled in the main salon. Make them think it's a newsreel stunt. Very well, Mr. Tracy. Thank you, Mr. Churton. Thank you very much. Not at all. Not at all. Any sign of the necklace yet? No, not as yet. Where is Copeland, sir? Pick it up. The right guy comes in. It's working perfectly. That's fine. That's fine. Oh, I do hope he asked me to speak. Oh, I'm just dying to do it. Oh, the folks back home. Now, will you say a few words? Me? Oh. Yes, come right along. Oh. And now, Miss, um... Uh, Miss Clarabelle. Uh, Georgetta Clarabelle. <laughs> I, I'm from Creamy Falls, Iowa. <laughs> yes. Well, Miss Clarabelle, will you say a few words for us? Uh, yes, into the mic. Mike? The microphone, Miss. Oh, yes, of course. Okay, Steve. I'm sure this will be a thrill for the people in the Creamy Falls. <coughs> and now tell us, Miss Clarabelle, have you enjoyed your flight in the Pacific Queen across the ocean? Oh, my, yes. It's been just too, too wonderful. And now, friends of the radio. That's and fine, Miss Clarabelle. Clarabelle. Thank you very much. And now, uh, and now if someone else find anything. Yeah. Oh, but I have so much more to say. Don't move, anybody. Ah! Your phony camera didn't fool me. You're G-Man looking for the Mogra necklace. But you're not going to get it. You get me? You're not going to get it. Got the necklace, Steve. Come on. You ought to know that these newspaper men out here are threatening to bust right into the place if you don't give them a story about them jewels. All right, Mike, send them in. I'll give them a story that will make headlines in the next edition. Boys, I have a surprise for you. Take a look. Looks like the Mogra necklace. That's exactly what it is. The spider ring stole the imitation. You wouldn't fool me, would you, mister? Figure it out for yourself. You know there's an imitation in a real one. So which would you take? The one that was carefully hidden away, or...? I get you. It's the imitation that's hidden away that the crooks grab, thinking it was a real McCoy. That was Monsieur René's idea, exactly. I'll say that's using the old beans. Human psychology. 
Boy, what a story. Look out, fellas, look out. Look out. It worked. But I can't understand. You will. Now, here's the idea. You will take off this afternoon on your announced flight east. Once in the air, a robot plane controlled by radio will take the course you were supposed to follow. I am banking on the spider reading the report of the imitation having been stolen and trying to get the real one. Oh, I begin to understand. <laughs> A clever trick. But Monsieur René has not outwitted us yet. Gordon must be told of this at once. He is with the wing. I will communicate.
and head for the robot plane. I'm going to quarter. Circle and get back into position again.
Are you all right, Junior? Sure. Gosh, that was exciting, Mr. Tracy. Yes, I'll say it was. That's Mr. Lockwood's plane. Sounds like he has engine trouble. He'll be lucky if he doesn't crack up. You two were gone ashore that time. You and me both. From the sound of your motor, you came near not making it yourself. You're telling me. Start to do plenty of work on that motor before I take off again. <laughs> I want to get to that wreckage and plant the imitation necklace before the spider's men get there. Right. By the time he gets back, I'll have this bus running. Oh, boy. I hope this radio works. Calling location three. Calling location three. Your cat shows more intelligence than many humans, Moloch. Sometimes I'm tempted to try another experiment. And what is that? Transplanting the brain of a cat into a human. It would be even more interesting than the operation I performed on Gordon Tracy. Perhaps someday you can try that on his brother, Dick Tracy. He should make an even greater criminal. Well? Gordon Tracy is calling from the wing, sir. Stand by, flying wing. Go ahead, Gordon. Plane with the Mogra necklace crashed just off Kendall Road. Impossible to land. I'll await you here. You heard the location. Send a car there at once. The real necklace is in that plane. We have no use for this, Moloch. An imitation. It's worthless. <laughs> Cheer up, Mike. You're letting your imagination run away with you. Well, it ain't imagination, Miss Gwen. He's dead. Junior's dead. I saw him. And I could see the robot plane had taken off. Little Junior was inside. He couldn't get out. His little face was pushed up against the glass, looking at me and calling to me, calling for me. Mike McGurk, calling Mike McGurk. I can hear him just as plain. Well, no wonder. Now you can hear him even more plainly. Mike McGurk, calling Mike McGurk. Hello? Hello, Mike. Mike, this is Junior. <laughs> I knew the little fella would be all right. I'm with Steve Lockwood, and we're grounded somewhere near Kendall Road. Yes, the engine went dead. And say, Mike. 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 Hey, Mr. Lockwood, the radio went dead. What, what's the matter? Junior? What? What? As what? soon as he gets his plane fixed. Why, something must be wrong. Hurry, Mike. Well, what, 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 We've what? got to find them. Phone the field. Tell them to have my ship ready.
isn't yet. Come on. the necklace was in. It must have fell out and burned up in the fire. We better go back and report. any longer.
I can't hear them anymore. Well, try to run away, Blake Mike. Steve. Steve Lockwood. Well, is it still dead? It isn't just right yet, but I can hear someone. Well, keep trying. I'm at the spider's hangout. Mr. Lockwood! Mr. Lockwood! Here's Dick Tracy! What does he say? The boss is in trouble! You know, the old Beechwood Hotel. Beechwood Hotel? Where is that? Well, that's only a few miles from here. Strap on your safety belt, Junior. We're taking off for Beechwood Hotel. Get a squad of G-men and... Too late, Dick Tracy. Were you so anxious to get this imitation? Or were you trying to be very clever and fool us? I not only tried, I did fool you. A lot of good it did you. I wouldn't be too sure of that. Nitroglycerin, gentlemen. All right, stick them up. It's all right, Mike. They won't move. Drop that gun. I'll take that necklace now. Go ahead, blow us up now and kill him too. All right. I will. Oh. Castor oil. Give me that gun. Get the plane started. I'll stall them long enough for you to get there. It's our only chance. This way, Manny. Surround the house.
take that necklace now. Go ahead, blow us up now and kill him too. All right. I will. Oh. <laughs> Castor oil. Give me that gun. Get the plane started. I'll stall them long enough for you to get there. It's our only chance. Moloch and the lame when the wing is ready. I'll be waiting for them. sure they don't follow us. Well, no use trying to chase them. My plane won't go that fast. Anyway, Steve, I got the necklace. Let's get back to town. Can I look at the necklace, Mr. Tracy? Sure, here you are, boy. Reported by phone, sir. He and the others got away from Tracy's men in the car. Good. We'll need them for the work at the cove. Claude will be at Whitey's. You can start now, Caston. Depends upon who wants to buy it. In that case, the formula of Nicolanian is very valuable to us, thanks to Mr. Callion. I'm glad you're safe, Gordon, even though you do not bring the Mogra necklace. I can still use you. What's done is done. I sent Caston over to see Randolph. Has any report come from the cove? The submarine hasn't ducked yet. You don't think Callion will draw out now, do you? If I could depend upon you, Gordon, as much as I can upon Callion, the formula for Nicolanium would be out of this country in another two or three hours. Our only failure so far is an inferior organization. I'm going to Whitey's. You can sign that in the usual manner, Gwen. Right. Well, Steve, any luck? Sure. The fingerprints on that gun belong to Claude Destino. Destino? 
Where does Destino hang out? At what? He's down at the cove. He's a pretty slippery customer. Why do you stay at the cove even though it's deserted? He's not staying there for love of the place. How about the gun serial number? It was filed off, but we got a reading at the laboratory. It was registered to Hans Jensen. He's Randolph's watchman. Randolph? Why, he's the famous chemist. The man who just perfected a new secret alloy called nickelanium. We haven't any time to lose. We're going to visit Mr. Randolph. Mike, get the car ready, will you? He's seldom home, but I've been to his laboratory, and we might find him there. That foreman mustn't get into the wrong hands. took it. You mean your formula? Hey, Chief, there's a footprint and some oil over here. You reckon that means anything? Better take a look at that footprint, Gwen. That's the man, Mr. Tracy. I think I've got something, Dick. What do you think of it, Mr. Randolph? That looks like the typical reaction for sesame oil, Miss Andrews. It is sesame seed oil. The test is infallible. The man who stepped into that spilled alkali solution had the oil on his feet. Two and two equals the cove this time. I checked on that when I was looking up Claude Destino. Those warehouses there were last used by a big vegetable oil importing house. Phone Anderson, Gwen. We're going down to the cove. Right for the waterfront, Steve. Right. Gents, what'll it be? You're strangers around here, I take it. Uh, try my stew. I'm famous for it. Famous. You don't have to long back to these guys, Whitey. Destino here knows them, even if you don't. submarine yet? Not since the last report. Said he'd dock sometime today. It's about time Canyon submarine arrived.
Where do you think you're going? Coming through the passage. Get him and bring him up to me. Don't move, Tracy. He's a copper. Get going, Tracy. Up the stairs. Come on. No time to lose. Government men are up front, Mr. Callion. No morning, Brusky. Tell Captain Stalker to stand by. We leave at once. Here is Randolph's formula for nickelanium. Uh, my government appreciates your efficiency.
have no time to lose. Government men are up front, Mr. Callion. No morning, Broski. Tell Captain Stark to stand by. We leave at once. Here is Randolph's formula for nickelanium. Uh, my government appreciates your efficiency. Except for the police. Good work, Junior. See that, Steve? It'll be worthwhile for us to contact Death Valley Johnny if the spider's plans involve him. Right, let's go. Come on, you. most important that we find this secret mine before the old prospector reveals his location. Everything is in readiness. We will be the only ones to learn the secret of the man who calls himself Death Valley Johnny. Do you have a gentleman registered here by the name of uh, Death Valley Johnny? <laughs> I should say we have. He's right over there in the midst of all those reporters. You can't miss him. How about another picture? Sure. Wait. I gotta have a cigar. <laughs> sure you got enough? Oh, I got a dozen. I ought to be able to get one. <laughs> Wait a minute, boys. Will you have a cigar? Why, certainly. Sure. Will, will we have a Johnny? cigar? <laughs> You're a great guy, Johnny. Will I give you the headlines or will I give you the headlines? It's all right. Hello, Hello boy. Boy. Hey, don't forget to print the best one. <laughs> Hello, boys. Have a cigar. No, thanks. I don't use them. You? No, thanks. I smoke a cigarette. Oh, cigarettes, eh? <laughs> well, sit down and let's have a powwow. Well, we don't mind if we do. <laughs> don't mind if I smoke. No, go right ahead. Help yourself. All right. Uh, what newspaper are you boys from? We're not from any newspaper. I'm Dick Tracy, Federal Bureau of Investigation. This is my assistant, Steve Lockwood. Well, what brings you here calling on me? We're here in your interest. We have reason to believe a certain criminal ring may cause you trouble. Well, I'm a lazy horn toad. If some yellow coyote ain't trying to get his greasy paws on my specimen gold, eh? A whole pack of coyotes. Yeah. Listen here, young man. I've guarded the whereabouts of that mine for nigh on to 20 years. And no hombre's going to get it away from me. Besides, <laughs> the gold won't be mine after 10 o'clock tonight. <laughs> I'm selling out. Does anyone beside yourself know where the gold is? <laughs> no, sir. I kept the secret of that mine in my head. And I ain't gonna open my yap until those jewelers sign on the dotted line. Jewelers? Yes. I'm selling out to a big firm of New York jewelers. <laughs> and, uh, it's a good stiff figure, too. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a pleasure meeting you, sir. And I hope your deal turns out as you expect. If I can help you in any way, let me know. Well, ain't never needed a G-man yet, but... You never can tell. <laughs> Goodbye, boys. Glad I've met up with you. Goodbye. So long. So long. <laughs> Five minutes past ten. 
I see no reason for this delay. I'm always punctual in my appointments. Oh, will you stop that confounded tapping? Oh, I'm sorry. What can be keeping that lawyer? Park said he'd have him here by 10 o'clock sharp. Come in. Nolan is my name. Mr. Clark sent me to render my legal services on his behalf. Mr. Nolan, Mr. James, Mr. Noble, Mr. Wickland. Gentlemen. And Mr. Death Valley Johnny. How do you do? Pleased to meet you. Take a chair and we'll get to business immediately. The meeting will come to order. Gentlemen, as per our agreement, we have deposited $500,000 to the credit of uh, Mr. Johnny to be held in escrow pending the time that he shall turn over all properties referred to in this agreement. Right? <laughs> oh, shucks. If you say so, it's right. Sign right here. Yeah, sure. Uh, say, you sure this is right and in order? Absolutely, sir, provided you can produce the specimen gold. Oh, I can do that all right. Now, sir, I suppose you won't mind disclosing the whereabouts of your hidden mine. I suppose the specimen gold is kept there. Yep. I'll draw you a map. Here you are. All right, thank you. Ain't no trick in finding it once you get on the right track. There. That ought to be plain and simple like. That will be fine. Mr. Nolan, I'd like to see that map, if you don't mind. I must say your actions are most peculiar. I'll so Come, sir. Like sorry. Give us that paper. Are you calling a doctor? No, I'm calling the police. Never mind the police. Call Dick Tracy. I want Dick Tracy. No, no, no. Hello, hello. Operator, operator, can you give me Dick Tracy? Yes, Dick Tracy. Poor old timer. He's putting up a great fight, but there's not much hope. We'll know better after the anesthetic wears off. Let me have his clothes, will you, doctor? There might be some clue in them which will prove of value to me. Of course. Nurse, will you have his clothes bundled up for Mr. Tracy? Well, certainly, Doctor. I'm hunting for those yellow coyotes, Johnny. Reddish brown. It's copper quartz, all right. Now, Gwen, let's see another. Check copper quartz specifications found in the geological atlas. Find out what locations this type of quartz can be found in. Right. Do you think we're getting anywhere, Dick? We're taking the chance that Death Valley Johnny wore the same boots here as he wore around his secret mine. If such is the case, and if the specimen of copper isn't too common, we may get a direct lead to the place in time to stop the spider ring from accomplishing its purpose. Now, here it is, California. Thunderhead Mountains in Death Valley. Only mine. The old acre mine. Produced 100,000 tons annually. The stuff's rare. Where's the mine, Steve? It's located near Coyote Wells. The mine shut down in 1905 when the town was deserted. Ghost town, eh? Steve, we're going there tonight. Gwen, phone the airport. Tell them to have my plane ready. Good luck, Dick. Thanks. Dick, never. Think they can put one over on me, do they? Hey, doctor! Nurse! Here, here, hey, sir. Uh, You're a sick man. Hey, where... Do... Hey, Dub Dub! Listen, I'm not sick. The way you folks act, you think I've never been shot before. Well, it's my clothes. He hasn't any fever. No, it's... it's what do you hold my hand for? It's regular. 
Certainly it's regular. Say, I want to see Dick Tracy. And you get him for me quick. All right, nurse. Call Dick Tracy. Yes, doctor. And listen, young lady. You tell him to make this hospital give me back my pants. There's something in them I want. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, I will. Yeah, and don't you tell I'll me I'm sir. sick. Don't, don't I know, just, but I'm just I'll... nothing the matter with me. All right. I'll be right over. Yes, I'll bring his clothes. Mike, would you get the car? We're driving right over to the hospital. You get right back to bed, young man. Yes, ma'am. I guess you can go. Let me carry the clothes. Spooky-looking place, isn't it? Looks dead enough, but you never can tell. Let's close in on it. Right. They may have heard our plane land. Let's separate in case of an ambush. All right, Dick. of them pants, Sonny, and give me what you find. Mr. Tracy has already left to go to your mine, so I came in his place. Huh? How did you know where my mine was? We were able to trace the location by the quartz particles still sticking to your boots. Well, I'll be doggoned. He should never have gone out there without first talking to me. Now, there's something awful dangerous in that mine if you don't know just where it is. That's it, Sonny. Give it to me. <laughs> but tell me, what is there in the mine that's so dangerous? Oh. You better ring for the nurse. <sighs> Mike, we'll have to drive like mad to Death Valley to prevent Dick from going into that mine. Oh. What's the matter? Well, I think your patient has fainted. Well, you better wait outside. I'll see what I can do for him. you guys snap into it the spider will be here any minute hurry it up
trying back of the bar. Come on, men. Come on, boy. Land only long enough to load the specimen gold aboard. Some guy creased me with a bullet last night. I haven't seen Dick since. Oh, we must find him. There's something in the mine he doesn't know about. I'll say there is. The fighter will be here any minute. 
The wing. Come on, boy. Land only long enough to load the specimen gold aboard. Tracy, Mike, while I attend to these rats. <laughs> calling location three. Calling location three. Nick Tracy stopped us again. We were unable to get the specimen gold. I am returning at once. See you, gentlemen. We took the liberty of having your servant let us in. I was anxious to know if you'd had any luck concerning Gordon. No. I had any trace of my brother. But I'm sure I'm on the right track. The spider ring is responsible for his disappearance. If you can think of anything we can do to help you, just call on us. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Good afternoon. Hello? Oh, hello, Chief. What? Yes, the daughter of H. T. Clayton, the famous aviation expert. Ought to be there any minute. She'll tell you the setup. All right, I'll see what it's all about. Goodbye, sir. Better comb your hair, Mike. We're going to have a caller, a girl. Oh, boy. I hope she's beautiful. Is Mr. Tracy in? Why, yes, Miss Clayton. He's expecting you. Mr. Tracy? And you're Miss Clayton? Yes. This is my assistant, Mr. Lockwood. How do you, How do, you do? Well, it's all right, Miss Clayton. We all work together. So you may feel free to tell us what brought you here. It's my father, Mr. Tracy. I'm worried about him. Well, won't you sit down? Thank you. Now tell me what it's all about. Well, you see, Dad's been working on a new high-speed plane. Something much faster than anything ever flown before. We've been working in the utmost secrecy, and the hangar's been under guard day and night. I see. Well, I've had a feeling for some time that, that something was wrong. Dad only laughed at me and told me I was imagining things. Then, last night, someone broke into the house, and they rifled his desk. Someone after the plan of his motors? Yes, I'm sure that was what brought them there. Worthless. All of them worthless. They don't tell my government anything that isn't already known. But, Excellency, they were stolen from Clayton's private desk. They must be what you wanted. They don't reveal the secret of the plane's great speed. That is what I wanted. 
And that is what you must obtain for me, or else I... Or else what, my dear Excellency? Or else I must contact a dirigible to pick me up at once and return to my country. My government will pay well for the secret of Clayton's new motor, but for these useless papers, nothing. I said I would get it for you. That should be sufficient. I will expect word when you have accomplished our agreement today. See me? If we fail to get the secret of Clayton's new plane, our negotiations with Durston's government will come to nothing. Can you supply him with those plans? I can do better than that. I'll deliver the plane itself. Tell me, Gordon, how will you get this plane for us? The police are guarding it. To today, it takes off on its final test flight. Who knows? It may fly right into our hands. Hello, dear. Hello, Daddy. Daddy. This is Mr. Tracy. Mr. Tracy is from the Department of Justice. Happy to meet you, Mr. Tracy. How do you do, sir? I thought now I told... Now, don't go, Daddy. You know how worried I've been, and especially after last night. I appreciate your being here, Mr. Tracy, but really there's no cause for alarm. The plane is amply guarded. Your daughter tells me you were robbed last night. <laughs> yes, but they'll never get any of my secrets that way. They? You know... In a revolutionary invention such as mine, there are bound to be lots of people interested. I'm turning the plans over to our government tonight, if Betty's last test flight proves successful. You? Are you the test pilot? Why, well, certainly. I'm the only one who has ever handled the ship. Now, you'd better run along and get into your flying talk. Well, I'll be ready when you are, Dad. Come along, Gwen. I haven't trusted it out of the family. Besides, you have to know your ship pretty well when you're flying 700 miles an hour. 700 miles an hour? Yes. Would you like to go up with Betty and see how it handles? I certainly would. You think they'll let us go, too? What, ride in that thing? Me? Everything ready? Plenty of gas and oil? Mr. Tracy's going with you, dear. Oh, fine. Bye. Now, you folks better step clear of this propeller blast. They'll be taking off now. Well, happy landings, Dick. Women drivers in automobiles is bad enough. Heaven help old Tracy up there in that crate. Now. About 500. I'll open her up now. She's turning over perfectly. I think I'll go back to the airport now. No, you won't. Keep her head in the way she is. Keep your hands up till I get the control. I don't know how I can ever thank you for this. That's all right, Mr. Clayton. I think this is the work of the spider ring. It was not difficult to smuggle our man aboard the plane. By now, he should be... You may enter. The plane has arrived. Something went wrong. Our man was captured. I saw the plane land. Dick Tracy had him. Dick Tracy again, eh? The dirigible picks me up tomorrow morning. 
I must have either the plane or its plans before that time. And this plan shows a sectional view of the new wing design. Well, I'll certainly be glad when these plans are out of our possession. Mr. Clayton? No, nope, I'm not Mr. Clayton. Mr. Clayton over there. Oh. Good evening. Mr. Clayton? Yes, sir? I'm John Henderson, Bureau of Varanotis. Oh, yes. I've been expecting you, Mr. Henderson. Now we're all anxious to get down to business? Yes, I have the plans right here. I'll get them. Aren't you afraid those plans might be stolen? It wouldn't do the thief any good. I'm the only man who can decipher the code they're in. So you're from the Bureau of Aeronautics? Why, yes, Mr. Tracy. How's uh, old Joe Williams getting along down there these days? Oh, Joe, he's come along great. Expect promotion for him any time. Joe Williams has been dead for two years. You're not from the Bureau of Aeronautics. You better put those plans in a safe place, Mr. Clayton. Mike, get Steve. Tell him I got some of the spider's men. Okay, Chief. Stop and all I got for was dirt. That isn't dirt, it's mud. Well, I got it off the car. What's the matter? I can have it clean. Dry as a bone here. Maybe that's it. Let's call the weather bureau and find out where it's rained recently. Where has it rained heavily in this district this afternoon? Thanks. It rained this afternoon in the mountains around Caribou Pass. Caribou Pass? Well, that's where the old Beachwood Hotel is. If I only had a quick way of getting there. Dead speed plane. Use that. It's worth a try. So you still refuse to translate your plans for us, do you? sample of his writing? Sure, Chief. Write a little note to his daughter. I think we can get her to pay us a visit. You wouldn't do that! No. I'll tell you what to write. I'll do it. I thought you'd see it my way. And I am. Now get busy. I expect you to have everything ready by daylight.
the wing ready. ready to fire.
We'll make them wish their plane had ended it quickly for them. any further interference. I'm all right, but for a while up there, I was afraid the spider had us. Steve hadn't come along, we'd look like a couple of sieves. I'm afraid your plane's a wreck, though. Oh, that's all right, so long as I'm alive to build another one. I saved the plans. It crashed over there in the trees. I'll investigate the wreckage, and as soon as Steve lands, you tell him to wait here with you. Right, we'll be waiting for you. Location three. Calling location three. Go ahead, Gordon. The speed plane crashed at Drury Field, but I think the motors might be salvaged. Recover them, Gordon. Then contact Durst and Zeppelin and put the motors aboard in midair. I must have those motors at any cost. The dirigible is taking me back to my country today. I will contact it at once and wait for word where to meet you. Very well, Durston. Stay in the stratosphere until you're above Drury Field, then descend. Calling ZQR-6. Calling ZQR-6. Get it, get it. ZQR-6 standing by. ZQR-6 standing by. Return to appointed rendezvous immediately. I will contact you in plane. Very well, Excellency. seem to be hurt a bit. Yeah, come on, fellows, up she goes. All right, man, it's no use sticking around here any longer. We got the motor loaded. The wing! 
up on your safety belt, Mr. Clinton. We're going to shoot that wing down. Rise to 35,000. We meet the Zeppelin above the channel off San Francisco. Stand by to transfer those motors as soon as we contact the Zeppelin. Everything's in readiness, sir. There's an airplane with a machine gun attacking us, sir. Turn to fire? No. We'll soon be above his ceiling. We can easily outdistance those G-men. Increase your speed. My ship has reached the ceiling, but I'm going to follow him as long as I can. QR6. Calling ZQR6. Calling ZQR6. ZQR6 standing by. ZQR6 standing by. Proceed. Have recovered both motors in good condition. Advise position for contact. Refer to code book 6211. Acknowledge. Verifying 6211. Verifying 6211. Everything's in, in readiness, sir. the zap hoist away Radio station stand by. SOS. SOS. Dick Tracy calling. Attention, Harbor Police, Federal officers. Stand by. I'm in a dirigible over the ocean, off San Francisco. I'm going to try to bring it back to land. SOS. SOS. Dick Tracy calling. Attention, Harbor Police, Federal officers. Stand by. I'm in a dirigible over the ocean, off San Francisco. 
SOS. SOS. Don't know where the dirigible will land. Contact the shore patrol in case I don't make it back. Dick Tracy calling federal office. Calling federal office. Something's happened. He stopped talking. He's lift me up and say, here, get away. Oh, get That's it. it right there. Federal 6400. Commander Brandon, please. Dick Tracy's office calling. Hello? Yes? Oh, we just received his call. I'll send them at once. All departments, general alarm. motors will be in our country. Sorry to disappoint you, gentlemen. I don't think my government wants those motors to leave the United States. I right, turn you back. Head back to the mainland. You heard me back to land. Heart of port. Drop her down to 10,000 feet. Come on, nose her down. that plane by radio from this cabin? No, only from the radio room.
Soon those marvelous motors will be in our country. Hard to disappoint you, gentlemen. I don't think my government wants those motors to leave the United States. I right, turn you back. Head back to the mainland. You heard me back to land. Hard at port. Drop her down to 10,000 feet. Steamship lines. Mr. Tracy, Mr. Vance. How do you do? How do you do, sir? And Captain Bullock of the Steamship Atlantis. Hello, Tracy. Captain, what's the trouble, Clive? A million dollars in gold has disappeared from the Atlantis. How? That's what we'd like to know. The gold was in a special compartment that was locked and sealed from the time the Atlantis left the other side until she docked here. When we went to open the compartment, the seal was just as we left it, but the gold was gone. You've searched the ship? From stem to stern. And all luggage before it was allowed ashore. Is the Atlanta still in port? Yes. We had a slight accident at sea. A fishing smack rammed us. It's a matter of routine. We're having the plates examined in case any need repairing. Well, I'd like to go aboard and look the vessel over. Certainly. I'll notify the yard superintendent to be at your service. Thanks. Captain, did anything unusual occur during the trip? Yes. A seaman was lost overboard. At first, we thought it was an accident. But later... We found this in his locker. Remember, others will be watching to make sure that you obey instructions. This is no piker's job, Clive. In fact, it's big enough and clever enough to make me think... The spider ring? What are you going to do? Make sure of the handwriting on this note first. Then... Well, good day, gentlemen. What did you find out about the note? Well, the handwriting does check with other notes. Then it is from the spider ring.
handwriting, Gwen. Gordon could have written that note. Oh, impossible. Gordon couldn't be the spider. Why? Why, the spider ring was operating before Gordon disappeared. That's right. For the moment, I... Hello, folks. I just heard about the missing gold shipment. Dick and hurried right over. What's the dope? Well, I'm going down to the dock and look over the ship. You better stick around here. Okay. Well, say, Chief, you better take me with you. I'm a human bloodhound when it comes to getting gold. <laughs> All right, Mike. Oh, Gwen, you better follow this away with the rest of them. You better go get your hat on. Hurry up, now. Polak, let Gordon in. We've been waiting for you. Everything is ready? Here's a working diagram of the Atlantis. This is where our ship rammed her. That uh, accident was a very brilliant inspiration, Gordon. And the goal? Here, near the bow, where we can get to it when we are ready. I'm the superintendent. I'm the superintendent. Oh, Mr. Stevens. My name is Dick Tracy. Oh, yes. Mr. Vance told me you'd be here. What can I do for you? Well, I'd like to have a little look around, if you don't mind. I sure. Come along. Thanks. Junior, you know in some localities I'm known as not tying McGurk? Really, I'm one of the finest rope tires that you've ever seen. Have you found any damage? Some. One plate seems to have been strung a bit. I'll show you. Could it have been done deliberately? Well, it could. But I don't see what good that would have done anybody. Where was she hit? Just aft of a midships. Now, here's the plate that was sprung. Now, there I go, spilling ink all over again. Now, I guess I'll have to get a new pen. <laughs> Here, take mine. Oh, thank you. Now, here's where she got rammed. And there's where the gold compartment is. Quite a distance apart, you see. Hmm. Have you fixed the plate yet? No. The riveting crew will take charge of that when they get here. Want me to show you the ship before I go? Before you go? Yes. My foreman Clancy bosses the riveters. Come along. Thank you. It looks solid. It is solid. There's nothing wrong with it. I've tried it in Indochina. And What's the gag, Mike? Oh, I was just showing Junior a little rope trick I had here. High class. <laughs> now, you take the two ends, see, and you put one on each wrist like this. Now, pull them tight. And I mean, that's it. Pull them good and tight. Dick Tracy, the G-man, just came aboard. He's making a complete inspection of the ship. Better notify the lame one. Calling to location seven. Calling to location seven. Calling to location seven. Location seven answering. Stand by. I'll take it. Go ahead. Dick Tracy just came aboard. He's making a complete inspection of the boat. I'm leaving at once for the dry dock. Want me to cut it? Oh, you don't think I can get out of it, huh? Me, what sail the 11 C? Well, I'll fix it this way. Well, there 
much I can tell you, Mr. Tracy, except that this is the vault where the gold was stored. Well, I'd like to take a look inside. Go as far as you like. Clancy will cooperate with you. Glad to have met you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Clancy, there's a G-man aboard. G-man? Yeah. I don't know what he wants, but do all you can to help him out, will you? Yeah. in there. You might have been smothered to death. Yes, I might have. You know where I can find this fellow Clancy? Yeah, that's me. Oh, I see. You have the blueprints. Are you going to fix that damaged I... plate? Uh, yes, yes. I was just starting to do it. Well, do you mind if I tag along? No. Suit yourself. I've already marked the plate. Cut it according to this blueprint. All right, boss. So that's where the damage plate is. Sure. Where'd you think it was? I was just wondering. Thanks. Well, What's the matter with you, Mark? You afraid of burning them rivets? Can I see that blueprint for a minute? I suppose you're going to try to tell me my business. No, I'm just a curious sort of a guy. Be ready when they remove that plate. That's all you can do from in here. Take the equipment outside and start cutting from there. What's that? Blueprint showing where the damage plate is. I thought it was more amidships. How do they make those? With white ink? Ink. There was an ink spot on Stevens' copy. I loaned you my pen. This isn't the right blueprint, Junior. You wait here for me. Couldn't mind your own business, could you, Copper? Shipyards. Call headquarters and ask them to send help. Main, 4100.
when they remove that plate. Piece of metal, Steve. Hey, you had the right hunch, Tracy. Here's the gold. Oh, so that's where the gold was hidden. of your skill as an engraver, Mr. Coulter. It will be most convenient to manufacture our own money. You will excuse me a moment, please. Coulter, Delivered as per plan. Everything in readiness to proceed. That's very kind of you, Mr. Odette, but I don't know if Dick will be able to make it. The broadcast takes place very shortly now. Oh, uh, that may be Dick now. I'll go see. Oh, hello. hello. Where's Dick and Steve? Oh, they're out chasing a spider. Oh, don't worry about it, Miss Andrews. I fixed everything down at the dock. You know, it was like this. Yeah. I was standing there. Boy, when I got done with them, they all had black yeah. eyes. Yeah. And one guy yeah. had a place Mike. on it. Just... Oh, hello. Uh, I was just telling Miss Andrews here. So I heard, Mike. Do you think Dick will be back soon? Oh, you can't tell. If there's anything I can do for you, gents, you know, I'm his chief assistant. No, I, uh, maybe you can at that. We wanted Dick to make a little talk over the radio and address to the boys' club, but if he's tied up... Oh, let me do it, Mr. Odette. Boy, that's right up my alley. Right up my alley. All right, Mike, we'll give you a chance. Gee, I'd like to hear myself on the radio. I bet I'm plenty good. You can, Mike. I'll make a record of it in my photograph over here. You can hear it when you get home. Oh, good. Then I can hurry right home after the broadcast and see how I sound, can I? Where's that speech? Here it is. Uh, All of it. Oh, man, I'll know that backwards time we get that studio. Come on. Bye, Miss Andrews. Junior, can you really make a record of Mike's speech? Oh, sure. All I do is record his speech in this record and run it off in my phonograph. Now, this is a record I made the other day of a shortwave broadcast. I don't know who it was talking, but it certainly was a good record. Did you get the spider? No, Junior, but the police found something on one of his men that I wish I could figure out. Does that mean anything to you? 7.2, 2.30, 7.2, 2.30. It's Greek to me. Let me see that, will you? 7.2230. You will now hear a brief address on crime prevention by Michael McGurk. Mr. McGurk. Now? Please. The ABC Finance Company will... Be I want to tell you about this this case in case you the, in the case that in case you didn't know about this what was I talking about oh murder yeah <laughs> be sure you play it right I won't miss
I wouldn't let our methods of communication give you any cause for concern, Mr. Coulter. Crime, you don't need prevention. When you got prevention, when you got prevention, you don't need crime. Gordon reporting by scrambling. Yes. When we play it back at the proper speed, we will get his report. Here's the thing about murder. You can get away. Uh, you can get away with about... So long. You can get away. You can get away with murder about so long, and then somebody gets killed. Now, you take the case of Henry Jones. Uh, that, that, that's his name, isn't it? Jones? Is that his name? Uh, Henry Jones was killed for, uh, when he was murdered. He died. <laughs> in case uh, you didn't know about this murder, here's the way it happened. This, this fellow was on his way home, this guy named Smith, see, uh, one night, when all, all of a sudden up in the window there was a parrot that said, Oh, Smith, ah! like, like that. Well, it scared him so bad that he started to run through the barn, and there was a cow what in there. What state is he on? Oh, it was 6.2. Like that. And he, he turned oh, no, I'm sorry. That was short wave. 9.50. Oh, he was getting scared at all 6.2. The time. 6.2, 7.2. That must be their wavelength. When phone the government radio station. Have them triangulate on short wave 7.2 right away. I've got to find out where that station is. Eve, get the aerial coil. Junior, you'll find a map of the city in my desk. Get it for me. Let's see now. South, southwest. Do what? Do what? Here we are, Steve. We've got it. Yes, we can find the exact location. Find it? We can't miss. It's right on the waterfront. Get the car ready. Come in. Everything's clear as a float. Take Mr. Coulter into our uh, guest room. Stand guard below. Yes, sir. Let's go. Steve, give me a hand. Well, I guess no more funny sounds are going to come through. I guess not. Hello, Mike. Now, you talk about a broadcaster. How did I sound? Want to hear yourself? Sure, I want to hear myself. 
Now, here's the, th here's the thing about murder. You can get away with it. That ain't me. Get away My voice don't sound like that. Hey, stop it. You're slowing it down. The submarine will pick up Colter at the warehouse. It will proceed to location 10, where our counterfeiting operations will not be molested. That's coming from the spider, and Dick's gone down there. Where? Well, I don't know, somewhere near the waterfront. But they took the map with them. What'd they say about a submarine? I'll find out. Come on, make that thing work some more. Turn I'll on, try, let's see. Mike. Relax. You can hear some more. Federal, 6400. Right. Commander Brandon, please. Harbor Police Headquarters. Brandon speaking. Oh, how do you do, Miss Andrews? What? We'd be there right away. Mike, Junior. Never mind monkeying with that. We've got to get down to the harbor. Submarine's ready to dock. Good. Get colder aboard. I'll be right there. Yes, sir. Dick beat it to somebody coming. Of control.
boats have control. my office, Carter. We'll interview them here. I've asked you all to be here so that we could compare notes and perhaps get some new lead on this spider business. You'll do the interviewing, Dick. Ah, here they are now. Gentlemen, thank you for coming. I want you to meet Dick Tracy. How do you do? Joe Crane is my name. I'm mighty pleased to meet you. Gee, Dick Tracy. My name's Perry. Say, I've heard an awful lot about you. How do you do, Perry? This is Bill Moffat, Dick. He works for the telephone company. Well, I'm glad to know you, Bill. How do you do? Mr. Tracy has a few questions he'd like to ask you. Gentlemen, these are all assistants of mine. You may speak freely in front of them. Please be seated. Mr. Crane, you are a conductor on the P&M Railroad, are you not? Yes, sir. I understand that some months ago you witnessed a strange meeting which took place on board a train. Would you mind telling us about it? Well, it was a late train pulling out of the P&M station for Los Angeles. <laughs> Perhaps the rest of you know why you're here. Perhaps you're afraid of him. Well, I'm not. Nor do I consider him useful to me. We understand each other. We're organized. What good is he to us? Maybe he will have something to say about that when he comes. Suppose he does. He's not here. And what if he were? Are we sheep that we follow him blindly? Man isn't human. Nah. I don't think he's on the train. Gentlemen, you, what is your report? Fine. Yeah, everything fine. That's all no. Fine, Chief, fine. Everything is okay. My affairs are in excellent shape. 
You wish to hear what I have to say? Then listen. I'm through with you. The rest might be yellow and lick your boots, but not me, not me. I'm not afraid of you, nor of anything you can do. No one could figure out how that fellow with the lame foot got on or left the train. The man with the lame foot is the man we want. He is undoubtedly the head of a powerful organization. The spider ring. Mr. Perry, tell us what you know. I deliver milk, Mr. Tracy. I had just started on my route early in the morning, before sunrise. I noticed a man who acted crazy. He seemed scared of something. He was trying to get away. I immediately phoned the police, but the man was dead. That spider mark had actually burned into his skin. The lame-footed man again. Some sort of a fiend who brands his victims with a spider mark before killing them. Ellery Brewster was killed that way. was one victim they didn't quite kill. Steve, remember Death Valley Johnny? Steve and I suspected the spider ring was after Johnny. Do you have a gentleman registered here by the name of uh, Death Valley Johnny? I should say we have. He's right over there in the midst of all those reporters. You can't miss him. Wait a minute, boys. Will you have a cigar? Oh, I should. Oh, will we nice, have a Johnny. cigar? <laughs> You're a great guy, Johnny. Will I give you the headlines or will I give you the headlines? <laughs> it's all right. Hello, boys. Boys. Hey, don't forget to print the vest one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hello, boys. Have a cigar. No, thanks. I don't use them. You? No, thanks. I smoke cigarettes. Oh, cigarettes, eh? <laughs> well, sit down and let's have a powwow. Well, we don't mind if we do. <laughs> don't mind if I smoke. No, go right ahead. Help yourself. All right. Uh, what newspaper are you boys from? We're not from any newspaper. I'm Dick Tracy, Federal Bureau of Investigation. This is my assistant, Steve Lockwood. Well, what brings you here calling on me? We're here in your interest. We have reason to believe a certain criminal ring may cause you trouble. Yeah. Listen here, young man. I've guarded the whereabouts of that mine for nigh on to 20 years. And no hombre's going to get it away from me. Besides, <laughs> the gold won't be mine after 10 o'clock tonight. <laughs> I'm selling out. Does anyone besides yourself know where the gold is? <laughs> no, sir. I kept the secret of that mine in my head, and I ain't going to open my yap until those jewelers sign on the dotted line. Jewelers? Yes. I'm selling out to a big firm of New York jewelers. <laughs> and uh, it's a good stiff figure, too. <laughs> Death Valley Johnny got it that same night. Now, sir, I suppose you won't mind disclosing the whereabouts of your hidden mine. I suppose the specimen gold is kept there. Yep. I'll draw you a map. Here you are. 
Why, right, thank you. Ain't no trick in finding it once you get on the right track. There. That ought to be plain and simple like. That will be fine. Mr. Nolan, I'd like to see that map if you don't mind. I must say your actions are most peculiar. I'm sorry. Come, sir. Like sorry. Give us that paper. <laughs> Death Valley Johnny didn't die. I guess he was too healthy and tough for the spider ring. The thing which ties these crimes together is the spider mark. And the walk of the man with the lame foot. Ah! What's the matter, Mike? I've seen a spider. And now, Mr. Moffat, tell us what you know. Yes, sir. I was sent by the telephone company to trace a bum connection. I traced it down to a kind of a spooky-looking place, a way out of town. It was night. But something queer was going on around there, so I stuck around to get a load of what was happening. Is he still alive? Bring him inside, quick. Come. I have a report for the lame one. What is it, Burke? We brought Gordon Tracy here. Send Tracy in to me. He's hurt, dying. We have to chase him, and he ran his car over a bank. And... Can you do anything about it, Moloch? If he's not too far gone, I might do more than you can imagine. Condition seems critical. What if he should die? Then we will eliminate a very dangerous enemy. He won't die. But by means of this operation, a simple altering of certain glands, he will be unable to distinguish between right and wrong. In that event, he will be very useful to us, Moloch. It was no mistake as to who they had, sir. It was Gordon Tracy, all right. My brother. There's no telling what those fiends have done to him. Listen.
mistaken as to who they had, sir. It was Gordon Tracy, all right. My brother. There's no telling what those fiends have done to him. Get away. Well, I thought he was a... I know. Yes, sir. Get going. I find the spider. When? You come with me. Oh, I'll find him. Did you see anything? No, but it isn't for a lame walk. The spider's got a bum foot. Doing, playing fireman or something? Hey, what is this? Say, Chief, did you catch the spider? No, I'm afraid he got away. Come on into Anderson's office. Hey, wait a minute. Will you do me a favor? All right. Help me get this bucket off my foot. I didn't get too good a look at the spider. Well, I didn't want to. It was horrible. No, oh, I think that outfit's a disguise. The face wasn't human. I wish there was some way to make sure. Well, I got a picture of him. You what? I said I got a picture of the spider. It's right in here. Good work, Junior. I'll report to you in the morning, okay, sir. Okay, Dick. Come on. has a mission for you. Dick Tracy has a photograph taken with a small camera. That film must never be developed. You know where Dick Tracy lives? Yes. Report to me when the negative has been destroyed. Yes, sir. We can depend on craft. Set, Gwen? All ready. I'm terribly anxious to see what those horrible men look like. So am I. At last we'll know who we're after. Turn off the light, Steve. Right. See that the door is closed tightly, Steve. I'm going to turn on the red light. All set. Chief, you ruin your eyes working in here in the dark. Did you get the picture? No, and if you turned that light on a second later, we never would have seen it. Close the door and turn off the light. I'll turn them out, Mr. Tracy. Oh, I do hope it turns out to be a good picture. So do I. See? It's coming clearer. I can almost make it out. Coming clearer. Any minute now. Oh. Mike, you've ruined it. Oh. Well, 
the best lead we've had yet on the spider ring. Hey, Mike, you dropped something. It ain't mine. Don't you eat at Whitey's Chop House? What is that, a meal ticket? Let me see that, Junior. Whitey's Chop House. Looks like our unknown visitor left his card. This may be a hot clue, Steve. Well, why not raid the place around dinner time? I'm not after that fellow as much as the man he takes his orders from. So you figure he'll lead you to the spider? I don't know, but I intend giving him the chance. But, Dick, that's too dangerous. You can't walk right into their hands. Well, maybe walking right to the spider's web. When do we start? I don't mean it that way. You can do more good here. Here? It's easier to trail a man alone. If I can follow him to the spider's hideout, I'll contact you to bring the police and clean it up. Well, how will you get in touch with me? I'll show you. Now, what in the world is that? This is one of the latest devices to be adopted by the federal authorities. Now, holding out on me, huh? How does it work? Well, in reality, it's a radio transmitting set on a belt. Oh, I see. Clever. Now, if I want to get in touch with you, I'll use our personal code. All you need to do is have these earphones glued to your head and keep tuned in on our regular wavelength. And I'll be sitting right here. That's the idea. Good tonight. Everything's good here. Fair enough. I'll have the regular dinner. Okay. By the way, do you know a fellow by the name of Kraft? Yeah. Why? Oh, I uh, found his meal ticket. I wanted to give it to him. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he, he just passed through here just a minute ago. Uh, leave it here with me and I'll see that he gets it. All right. How about the dinner? Oh, yeah. All right, coming up. Picture would 
have gone to every police station in the country. Here's Kraft now. You were successful? Sure. I destroyed the negative. Good. Return to Crag's head and tell the others to report here. I have a mission for them. I doubt that very much. I've been waiting a long time for this opportunity. Don't reach any further, you. Put your hands on the table. Before I turn you over to the police, there's one thing I want to know. What have you done with my brother Gordon? If you've harmed him... Steve, wouldn't you like a little rest? No, I'm okay. I'm, I told Dick I'd stick by this. Flames are spreading. This will all be a blaze in a minute. What about him? If he likes to get here, we'll see that he stays. Hi, him up. Get to the boat.
breakwater as fast as you can. turning up like a bad penny. Why, not at all, Mr. Odette. You're always welcome, you know that. Thank you. I suppose there's nothing new regarding Mr. Tracy's brother? Not a thing. Gordon's disappearance remains as much a mystery as ever. Well, I suppose we'll just have to keep on hoping for the best. By the way, whatever happened to that engraver, the one the spider's ring tried to kill when he refused to make the counterfeit plates for him? Why, uh, nothing that I know of. He's probably still in the hospital. That was a most amazing case. How Mr. Tracy rescued him and almost lost his own life doing it. <laughs> that all goes with the job of a G-man, Mr. Odet. <laughs> yes, I suppose it does. <laughs> well, tell Dick we dropped in, will you? Oh, I should be glad to. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mr. Goodbye. Potter. But the first place the spider's ring took you to, Mr. Colder, can you give me any idea where that is? Well, when my mind became clearer, I discovered I could see under the blindfold. The walls were paneled to the floor. Must have been a rather large house to have paneled walls. Did you see anything else, any of the people? I was afraid to try, but I did see a large black cat in the room, and I heard a man walking. It sounded like he was lame. Could you see his feet? Hello, doctor. Glad to see you, Mr. Tracy. Well, we're losing our patient today. How's that? Mr. Calder's family are anxious to have him at home. They called me again just now, and I agreed to let him go this afternoon on one condition. That the bandages are not to be removed until I say so. That suits me. Uh, they're sending a car for you at 3 o'clock. I'll leave word at the desk to have you ready. Doctor, could I see you alone in your office for a few minutes? Why, yes, of course. I'll uh, be in my office. I'll see you there in about 10 minutes. Jennings, there will be a car here for Mr. Coulter at 3 o'clock. Please see that he's ready. Yes, Doctor. That's the patient in 404? Right. Hello? 
They're gonna take Kohler out of here at three o'clock. Stand by and keep watch. Report immediately if there is any change in the time. So they're taking Coulter home at three o'clock. They're calling for him at three o'clock, but they'll never take him home. Coulter carries the mark of the spider, and no man has ever borne that mark and lived. Well, that is very true, but... There must be no exception. Gordon is right, Moloch. It will serve as a warning to Dick Tracy that the spider never sleeps. Very true, only it is too bad that we must abandon our plan to have him make the counterfeit plates. Coulter is such an expert engraver. But he has already refused. And that is also very true, my dear Gordon. But I recall a surgical case wherein a man's nature and his mind were completely changed by a simple little operation. I seem to have a vague recollection of hearing or reading such a case. The operation was on the brain. Now, there is nothing strange about that. Such cases have always received considerable publicity. You undoubtedly read of it in the newspaper. Then you believe such an operation would bend Coulter to our will? I know it would. Then it shall be done. There is just time to countermand my previous plan and make new arrangements. But at three o'clock, Coulter will be here. Unthinkable idea I ever heard. I won't allow it. As a matter of fact, I positively forbid it. But you can't forbid it, Clive. It's our one sure chance to trap the spider. Good Lord, Dick, if anything should happen. Nothing can happen. I'll prove it to you. Mike, get that road map off the wall. <laughs> You're a lot of help. Well, I got the map, didn't I? Well, let's see. Here's the hospital. We throw a ring of our department cars with their two-way radio completely encircling the hospital. If the spider ring shows up to get colder, as I expect, their car will be spotted by one of our guards and its description immediately broadcast to all the other cars. What, with so many cars following Dick at this? Only one of our cars will be following the spiders at a time. The others will be on roads paralleling the route. Oh, I get the idea. Then there'll be a net around the spider car all the time. And if they turn off into another road, the other cars will be immediately notified over the two-way radio, and one of them will take up the trail. In that way, no matter how often the spider's car changes its course, a different car will be following it. I guess that's a good idea, Chief. They lead us to that spider's hangout without even knowing that we're following them. That's what I hope they'll do. It's a perfect setup, Dick, but the question now is, will the spider make the attempt to get Coulter? They need those counterfeit plates. And you can bank on it. The spider will try again to force Colder to make them. All right. I withdraw my objections. But it's against my better judgment. This is that third degree burn case, Miss Jennings. Yes, Doctor. 402 is all prepared. Miss Jennings, this nurse will be all the help I'll need. Very well, Doctor. any chance worrying about me, are you? Why, of course not, but I am a bit anxious. Oh. The ambulance is here for Mr. Kohler. Mr. Kohler's all ready to leave. 
He's in room 404. Thank you. All right, Mr. Calder, the ambulance is here. I recognize that voice, Miss Andrews. That's one of the spiders, man. There's the signal. Stand by, everyone. Jackson calling. They'll be leaving any minute now. chances on the spider's men recognizing his mic, then they'd know something was up. Here's a description of the car. A white ambulance. No distinguishing marks. Speed 30. Passing Kane Boulevard. Jackson. Kane Boulevard. See where that is. Here, here it is. You gonna mark where the G-Man cars are, Mr. Anderson? Sure thing, Junior. There's three of them spread out over there, three over here. Cars, just fires cars right between them. Mm. Chester. Watch if it follows. Right. Paul Salam, he went right by. Car just turned into Chester Boulevard. Going east. That is all. Take over. Jackson. All right, Jackson. Anderson calling Fox. Anderson calling Fox. Come on, Coulter. You're getting out here. Yes, it's not wise to keep the spider waiting. Gee, you think something's wrong with the radio, Mr. Anderson? We should have heard from Mr. Morris before this. Morris reporting. No sign of car. Going through Casper to investigate. All right, Morris. Other cars stand by for Morris to report. Something's up, and I'm going to find out what it is. Why, he's gone. They've switched cars. Lockwood. 
Hey, what's up? That's what we'd like to find out. Here's the ambulance, but Dick Tracy and the Spider Gang have disappeared. So there's been another car here. Did any car turn out of Casper while you were watching? Yeah, a flower slate delivery car it headed south. That's it. They switched ticket of that Flores truck. Quick, broadcast the description of that truck to the other cars. Come on, Mike. We've got to locate that truck. Be back soon as I ditch the truck. Step on it. Come on, call it. Come on, no funny work here. Welcome, my dear Mr. Coulter. We are delighted to see you again. We're wasting time. Take Coulter to the operating room. All right, stick him up. Get over there. Get over there. Now back up. Back up! I wouldn't use that telephone. Drop that gun! Mr. Coulter seems to have made a sudden and remarkable recovery. My dear Moloch, you had better examine Mr. Coulter's head. It may need a new dressing. Dick Tracy. Seems your wish has come true. Dick Tracy is here to take Mr. Coulter's place. A marvelous opportunity. Take the great Dick Tracy to the operating room. Are you that blame up here, Austin? Hey, did you see a Flores truck go by here? Yeah, I seen it. Went by here going lick lickety flick lickety flick it. Yes, sir, he was really going. Was the truck going straight? No, he, he turned off up there on the curb by the by the old powerhouse, 90 miles an hour. It's a wonder he didn't ups, 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 ups. He might have turned over. Get the ether ready and the clothes. Would you increase the heat under that sterilizer, Gordon? Gordon. Gordon. Was that my brother, Gordon Tracy? So, the great Dick Tracy did not recognize his own brother. What have you done to change him so? It was really a simple little operation on the brain. So, and that's what you're planning to do to me? We planned it for Coulter, but since you have taken this place, the Ether!
Max lose a dish of truck. Step on it. Come on, Porter. Come on, no funny work here. Welcome, my dear Mr. Cole. We are delighted to see you again. We're wasting time. Take Colter to the operating room. All right, take him up. Get over there. Get over there. Now, back up. Back up! I wouldn't use that telephone. Drop that gun! My dear Moloch, you had better examine Mr. Coulter's head. It may need a new dressing. Dick Tracy. It seems your wish has come true. Dick Tracy is here to take Mr. Coulter's place. A marvelous opportunity. Take the great Dick Tracy to the operating room. Hey, what's the big idea? Come on down out of that buggy. Mike, look him back. Empty. Now, you better start talking and talk fast. Where's Dick Tracy? Come on, where is he? We know Tracy was transferred from the ambulance to this car you're driving. Where'd you take him? I can't tell you. The spider will kill me if I talk. Yeah, you're burning the chair if you don't. All right. I hit him over there. That's the spider's headquarters. Mike, get the radio and tell Mr. Anderson we've located Dick Tracy to get a flying squad out here right away. The spider may try to escape on his wing. Is everything going all right, Mr. Anderson? Gosh, the spider ring sure pulled a fast one on us, Miss Gwen. We don't even know where Mr. Tracy is. Shh. See, Mr. Anderson. Mr. Anderson, this is Mike McGurk, reporting for Mr. Lockwood. Go ahead, Mike. Mr. Lockwood says to rush a flying squad to the old Sierra powerhouse. The spider may try to escape in the wing. All right, Mike. They'll be there in no time. Get the ether ready and the cone. Would you increase the heat under that sterilizer, Gordon? Gordon. Gordon. Is that my brother, Gordon Tracy? So, the great Dick Tracy did not recognize his own brother. What have you done to change him so? It was really a simple little operation on the brain. Oh, and that's what you're planning to do to me. We planned it for Colton, but since you have taken his place... The Ether! I see you have already administered the anesthetic, Moloch. Just enough to quiet him. <laughs> he was strangely upset when I told him he was about to undergo the same operation I performed on his brother, Gordon. Then the great Dick Tracy has finally solved the mystery of his brother's disappearance. In a few minutes, his past will be blotted out, just as Gordon's was. Attention, flying squadron. Proceed immediately to the Sierra Pacific power plant. <laughs> squad of cars heading this way. They may be G-men. Oh, Dick Tracy's friends are looking for him already. I shall prepare a speech. 
fitting welcome for all G-Men. Now listen. An innocent, harmless sound, yet each tick heralds the coming of eternity. And now we must hurry to the powerhouse through the secret tunnel. We can escape in the wing before the G-Men discover we are gone. Like Dick's handkerchief. Well, then he's inside. Come on, let's bust in. escape in the confusion. Back to the tunnel. by the explosion. We'll just hand him a little surprise. Remember, no shooting. We'll be heard by the others outside. You know me? It's your brother, Dick. Oh. Oh, Dick. Be back. You haven't got me yet. Outside, Gordon. Gordon. Think. Try to remember. My dear Tracy, I am overwhelmed that you have solved the mystery of your brother's strange disappearance. And now, don't move. Outside, Gordon. Gordon, think. Try to remember. Oh, 
police car. Come on. Spider, Junior. The spider? The spider? But he deliberately drove the car over the cliff to avoid hitting us. Spider wasn't driving the car. It was Gordon. You know who the spider is? Who? Mr. Odette. Mr. Odette? I know it all the time. I pretty near had my handcuffs on him, but he went and left in that car. There's Odette. I'll take care of him, old man. You look after your brother. Gordon! Gordon! Dick, how come you're here? What's the big idea? Don't you remember, Gordon? I remember I was in a car, then something happened. It was Gwen and Junior. They were right in the path of your car. Gwen? Junior? You drove your car over the cliff to save them, don't you remember? All oh, like a horrible nightmare, Dick. I can't seem to remember anything. Don't try. It's all over now, and everything's going to be all right. Yes. I think I'm going places. The Department of Justice appreciates your great work in wiping out the spider ring, Dick. When you show up at the office, find that that appreciation can take a very concrete form. Thanks, Clive. But forget the fuss and feathers. All the part of a G-man's job. Maybe so. But you better show up at the office just the same. All right, Chief. If you say so, I'll be there. <laughs> Goodbye, Dick. Goodbye. Oh, by the way, Steve, you better show up at the office, too. Right, sir. Oh, Dick, I'm so happy for you. This looks like another promotion. <laughs> Where's Mike? We ought to let him in on this. Oh, he's in the laboratory trying some experiment. Mike, what happened? Oh, I was just experimenting with my new smoke screen, and I got it all right. I'll say you did, all over you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, heck. <laughs> 